In 1 Samuel chapter 3, I was going to start in a different place, but I'm looking at verse 1 now. It says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Eli was the priest in those days. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Ish. Aren't you glad you don't live in a time where the word of the Lord is rare? The word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. When the Holy Spirit came, he changed everything, didn't he? No one here is excited about me. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit came, he changed everything. The Lord called Samuel and he answered, here I am. Thought it was Eli. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called for me and I didn't call for you. This happens back and forth and back and forth. And finally, Eli gets it. He's like, Haha, if I'm not calling, ain't nobody else here, you know. The, the next time it happens, because he's like, it's the Lord. The next time it happens, this is what you do. And I want you to notice these words. Can we put them up on the screen, Jennifer? Do we have them? I'll tell you. In uh, verse 9. It says, go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So this is Eli's instructions. So now verse 10. Look at verse 10. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak, for your servant hears. You think Samuel wanted to hear from the Lord? I, I love this picture. Samuel... There's just something special in my heart about Samuel. Samuel is, has this earnest heart. He wants to hear from the Lord. He wants to be, he's, he was given, you know, his mom said, I'm gonna give this boy to you because you gave this boy to me. This is a beautiful story, he has a good heart. And that shows because he's welcoming the voice of God. He says, speak for your servant hears. Do you think that he was just, he just wanted to hear God just so we can hear God and say, hey, I heard God. As if it's some sort of pride measure. No, why do we hear the Lord? So we can live it. So we can live out his instructions. God doesn't waste his breath. Remember he breathed into the dry bones, right? He breathed life. When he speaks, it's meant to bring life. To bring us from where we have been to a higher place of glory. We go from glory to glory to glory. That's by the Spirit of the Lord. And as we've been working through this, what does my complete look like? What does complete look like for me? You know, what is God saying? What's God's version of my complete? Because we might have all kinds of ideas. Oh, if I just got this raise, or if I, if I just married this person, if I just, right? But what is the Lord saying? And for weeks we've been talking about this, but I don't feel a release yet to stop talking about it. So like the little boy Samuel, we should be posturing right now in this encounter service, which is meant to encounter God's presence, purpose, and power to accomplish it. Remember, it's God who works in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure. We all now have the Holy Spirit available to us as believers. And not only that, these rivers of living water, turn that faucet on and begin with, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Start there. Start there. Can we be in his presence in prayer for a few moments? And ask, Lord, what are you saying? I know we normally do this at the end of services, right? <laughs> at the end of a big, long teaching. But why don't we start with that? Lord, what are you saying to me today? What are you saying to me right now? What might I need to even receive this forthcoming message? Lord, you know. <laughs> Can these bones live? Lord, you know. <laughs>
Lord, we'll let you know and you can tell us. How's that? So we seek you in your presence. We want to hear from you. We know you have the best plans for us. We know you're not trying to withhold anything from us. You're not trying to take from us. Lord, you just are a giver. Give the direction. Use this as an exercise of your own spiritual ears. You might even call out to the Lord and say, Lord, I have ears to hear today. I have ears to hear. I put on ears to hear. Maybe the Lord is reminding you of something that Jesus has taught you today that you need to know, and that's part of your complete. You may be getting a sense of, you know what, this is not new information. This is a memory in a sense, but the Holy Spirit is bringing you back to it right now for a reason. That counts. That counts. That's one of the Holy Spirit's job description. But whatever you say complete looks like is what complete is for me. I know we've been in this mode for a few weeks, but is there anyone who hasn't yet shared that has felt a sense from the Lord of what complete looks like for their lives? Gina, it's interesting, although you didn't use this word. I feel like the Lord is speaking against idolatry. This is so strange. It may sound strange to you. Gina was talking about you know, we come into the Lord's presence and we're at, she said, I'm asking the question, you know, what does your complete look like for me? And this is the question we're meant to be asking. And so she's doing it dutifully. And she says that the Lord acknowledges that we're coming into his presence and asking. And it's not like this is the end of the story but that she's a part of his story. We are each one a part of his story. And so now his dream gets to be realized more fully because Gina's participating in it, because she's coming into his presence hearing from him. And then the word was reaffirmed to her about this single drop and then the ripples in the pool spread and spread and spread to many others. And I felt a strong sense, and the beauty of that, a strong sense on the other side was don't make an idol out of a service like this. Don't make an idol out of the, the emotional response in the Holy Spirit's presence. Don't make that an idol. It's, it's not that. That is the, the prompting. That's the leading to go do it, to go live that. It's not, oh, we... It happened and we heard you. Yay! That's a great start. But so many people stop right there. Like the gunshot at the beginning of the race. We go, woohoo, let's put a gunshot instead of running. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah, exactly <laughs> right. And the gun went off. Woohoo! And then no one's running. On your mark, get set, shoot. No. Mark said, go. Go. That's a good analogy, Sandy. Let's not make an idol of that. Let it be the motivation. Let it be the, the power that moves us along. We have confidence when we hear him speak. We know that we have guaranteed success when he speaks. <laughs> Joshua. The Lord spoke to Joshua. Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you. 
As I was with Moses, so I shall be with you. Be strong and of good courage. The Lord has plans for each one of us. What does your complete look like? What is the Lord saying your complete looks like? What is that thing? Is there someone else today? The Lord say, come into the fullness of the understanding of my word. To give yourself diligently and show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word. Study to show yourself approved. Study. Study what? Study the word of God. Study the Bible. Study his words. See, we're in the encounter service again. We we want to encounter God's presence, purpose, and power. And again, if the Holy Spirit is reminding us of things that Jesus has said to us, has instructed us, how would he remind us if we never knew? Well, Lord, I didn't know that. Well, the Holy Spirit can't remind you of it. And I was struck, kind of as a sister thought to this, I was struck last week. How are we going to talk about God's faithfulness if we've never seen him be faithful? We don't even know what he said that when he accomplishes it, it equals faithfulness. Does that make sense? So when we're reading the word, now we know what to expect, right? Oh, these are the things that will happen. And these signs will follow those who believe, right? All of that. Oh, God, you're so faithful because I saw that happen. What I read, what you told me would happen, happened. Lord, you did it. You're faithful. But if we never know, if we never study, if we never look into our Bibles and find out what is he saying, what has he said? And when he does it, we won't know that it's faithfulness, that it's his faithfulness being demonstrated. Definitely the Lord is saying to us, love my word, love my word. Thank you, Lord. The more we seek you, the more we will find you. I do love this song. And the more we find you, the more we discover, oh, there is every reason to absolutely love you and fall in love with you all over again. Because you are real. You are a giver, like Branamir taught us this past Sunday. You are a giver, not a taker. You are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. Who diligently seek you. In OSL level one, we're going through it all again. And learning that we look in to this perfect law of liberty. The law that's meant to free us. Not under the rules, and, but we have the, the Spirit of God in us. He, he's written His deal on our hearts. And now we can be absolutely free in Him. But we have to look into that perfect law of liberty. We read it, and it reads us. Amen. Amen. We're we're discovering who God is, and we're also discovering who we are. We're discovering who we are, who we had been, and we're discovering who we were created to be. Amen. Much of this answer of what does complete look like will come from the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit is here presently to usher you into that. And even that fine-tuned, you know, when you, anyone remember the rotary dials on the AM, FM? And then start singing? Yeah. You get to fine-tune it. And now you can hear. Thank you, Lord. That's it. It's coming in loud and clear. I know what to do. I don't think I've ever shared this here. I'll share it now. It was years ago now, maybe six, I don't know, but I was in a Wednesday night service, and the pastor was preaching, and I was taking notes, and I was doing the whole thing, but at the same time, I was praying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Just, you know how we do, just say the word, Lord, tell me anything, you know, and I'll go, right? And he's like... 
No, you won't. No, you won't. And I'm not sure he said it as hard as I presented or as I, as I felt it. But I felt that deep conviction. No, you won't. Because, how do I know? Because I've told you to do some stuff already and you haven't done it. Oh, God, you're right. And here's how, here's how, I don't, interesting, intricate, <laughs> deceived, I don't know how weird we are. I thought, yeah, but I, I would love this. I keep putting it off because it feels like it's for me and there's all this other stuff to do that I can be helping other people. He's like, I didn't talk about all that. I told you to do this thing. Oh, you did. And I didn't do it. So from that day, I kind of felt like I'm, I'm not going to tell you anything until you do this. That's the sense that I had. I don't know if I was completely right in that or not but I felt it strong and so I got about the business of doing that thing it probably took me six months to do but that was God knew it would take six months so I did it and at least I can say okay Lord I finally obeyed you now what's next have I, have I told you this before no. good and I wonder, I mean, oh, Jen and I, are, we are just so in love with you people, with the assignment that he's giving us here. He, he has brought us into this place, and it's been so wonderful for us. We love it. And I wonder, had I not done that, would I have locked, would I have kept myself locked in a cabinet Locked from the inside. Had the key the whole time. And didn't unlock it by obedience to be able to get out into the next thing. Into the, the fullness of what God is, is doing. I've wondered that. Because this is really good. It feels good on this side of obedience. And who knows if, if God would have been able to trust me to this level. Had I not surrendered and said okay 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 no matter what it feels like I mean you think well how how dumb you have to be <laughs> this is something that you wanted to do that would have given you joy it did give me joy I enjoyed doing it but it was like I'm I'm waiting I'm not I'm not investing in this well because of this over here so noble right so stupid Stupid is knowing the right thing and not doing it. It's not like I was ignorant. It's not like I didn't know. No, I knew. But it could very well be that what God's asking you to do is not so pleasant to you. No discipline seems pleasant at the time. <laughs> But that's what being a disciple is, isn't it? Disciplining ourselves to follow the voice of the Lord into his version of complete. Thank you, Lord, for speaking. Thank you for letting me share that, by the way. Um, because I love what, what fruit it produces. Hearing God and then doing it. See, that's why we come to Jesus. I'm just going to point over here in faith. This, is, this wooden thing is going to have scripture on it very soon. <laughs> That's why we come to Jesus, hear his sayings, and do them so we can build our lives solid on the rock of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, he ushered into us. Amen. Can you stand to your feet? Would you do that for me, please? Lord, whatever we're hearing, come on, just say it out of your mouth. Whatever we're hearing, we commit to do not to ignore, not to keep myself locked up from the inside with the key. But instead, we seek you, we hear you, we ask you to speak for your servant, 
I myself hear you and will do what you say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. He will do it. He will do it.